got my call and uh, like I was telling you, I, I totally, you know, just did not think I'd go to Mexico, opened it up, it was Spanish speaking Mexico and um, it was really, you know, felt good. Uh, I was like, okay, I know Spanish. It was also like a little bit terrifying, but, uh, but um, I actually got my call in, um, in like August. Yeah, like at the beginning of August. And um, I opened it up and it didn't even, I wasn't even leaving until December 21st something like that. December 19th is when I left. Um, and so it was just really like, like, oh my gosh, this is a long time. And so I just worked for all that time. I bought a lot of, a lot of like Spanish speaking guides. I, I took Spanish classes from sixth grade to 11th grade. So I felt pretty comfortable with my Spanish, but, but even in that year from 11th, grade to 12th grade, I didn't have a Spanish class. I felt like I forgot everything. So I bought all these things, these like CDs. Um, yeah, it's a waste of time. Just don't do it. You know, it, you're not going to do it unless you're like super motivated. I just was not motivated, I guess, because I didn't touch anything. Not one of those little study helps. I, I had some flashcards, but th those aren't even super helpful because there's some words that they use in Spain and other parts of the country that they don't use where you're going. So there's like three kinds of ways to say pen and pencil, and you'll, you just get confused. Anyways, um, none of that helped. And... Uh, <laughs> um, I even tried um, like trying to get myself used to like the spicy food that I was gonna like encounter and uh, so I would like buy spicy potato chips it is not the same thing it was fun but it doesn't actually prepare you for the spiciness um, unless you want to start like eating jalapenos you know that would prepare you but um, anyways so uh, I go to the MTC um, and my parents actually, we spent a week um, in Provo before we got to, uh, before I, I, I entered in the MTC, um, just so that they can spend some time with me and uh, my, also my older sister that was at BYU. Um, and it didn't really hit me until the night before maybe, like, oh my gosh, I'm not coming back for two years. So that kind of freak out moment didn't happen until that point. Um, but so... Uh, I definitely had to like rely on my testimony a lot at that, a lot at that point, because you're leaving behind everything comfortable, everything that my music, um, I played the piano a lot. Um, you, you gotta leave it behind. Like, it's not time for you to play. It's not time for you to like do your own thing. You're doing the Lord's thing. And so like that, I, I remember reading a book and like, I didn't even get to the end of it. And the night before I got to a certain chapter and I, I realized I need to go to bed and I was like, like, I can't, I'm not going to be able to do stuff like this anymore. And that, and it was hard, you know, but I knew that that is what the Lord needed of me. And I knew that's where I needed to be. And so it was okay. Um, so definitely had to rely on my testimony at that point. Um, and uh, so I get into the MTC and at that point your parents can could still come in with you and uh, yeah it was you know you watch a video and then everybody cries and you go your separate ways so maybe it's the best that they don't do that anymore but um, anyways so I got a companion um, like everybody does in a district and they were awesome we had nine guys um, six going to Six so going to, to Mexico and three going to like Peru or something. Well, um, the Peru guys left after three weeks, and um, it was just kind of just kind of crazy because um, two guys, um, two of the guys went home, including my companion, because they confessed stuff uh, in the MTC. Um, so. Yeah, and, and I'm proud of them for doing it. Uh, it was just a strange experience because like, oh, you have your companions and then they had to go home. And uh, I don't think they came back out. But um, 
But so, and that's, and I really think it's because the spirit is so strong. It is just so strong. You have so many really spiritual experiences. You're reading the scriptures all the time, going, uh, listening to these speakers, um, and the spirit just touches you in a special way, I think. And it's easy to convince yourself, like, I don't need to confess of this. It's in the past. But so, yeah, that, that happened. And, um, and so in the end, we were just four guys. Um, and, uh, actually my, the companion, the person who was my companion at the end, who was also going to Torion with me, um, in the end he went home, even though he got to the mission, but, uh, he just had some depress. I think he had depression and, and he got sick in other ways, but, um, again, like totally, you have those problems. It's totally honorable to just like go and, and figure it out. And I think you had to get some medicine and, and, uh, he sent us a letter later on, letting us know he was okay and and whatnot. But uh, anyway, so um, besides that stuff, um, I'll just share two quick experiences. Um, one was just like, which is a just kind of a weird, fun thing. Like the missionaries in the MTC are crazy. They do crazy things. I remember that they took mattresses at one point and like rammed into each other in the hallways with these mattresses, um, unbeknownst to anybody else outside of, you know, the, the building. Uh, but I remember that vividly. And also we had these weird parties called shine the light parties. So there's a song in like the 2000, 2003 EFY CD. I don't know what year, but it's an EFY song. It's like, shine the light, you got the light, you shine the light, you know, that one. And we would get in one room, all the, zo the, the zone, this was a zone activity. And we get in this one room, everybody with like their Polaroid cameras and turn the lights off and just like blare, like the song's blaring, you know, this s shine the light song. And it's just like a one song dance party and every and you, you're supposed to like take pictures. So it's like light, you know, anyways, it was so weird. And when we, when like my, my district went in, got there for the first time and we did it, we were like, this is so gay. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, but, but it was, a, it was just a, looking back, it's a funny, really funny um, and al almost enjoyable experience. Uh, so my Christmas kind of stunk, but, um, that morning, the first devotional was awesome, and I remember Elder Perry spoke. And at the end, honestly, I can't remember anything that he said the entire time, but at the end, um, he was talking about pioneers and something else. And um, in the end, he just bore testimony, he said, and he, he just said, I know that Christ lives. And at that moment, I knew the spirit testified to me that he knew it, that he really, really knew it. Um, and, and it was powerful. That, that was a very memorable experience. And the first time, uh, one of the first times that it was just somebody's testimonies, you know, I've heard a lot of testimonies and, and they're, you know, they're good testimonies and I can get something out of it, but it just like hit me so hard. He knows that man truly knows that Christ lives. Um, and I realized that, that you can tell when somebody has a spirit and when somebody has a testimony. Um, and that was a, that was a special experience. Um, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was it. Nine weeks and I was off, uh, to Mexico.